Here with my friends Gumbo and Freckles. Gumbo, Freckles, come out, come out, wherever you are. Over there, on that great book, is Grand Old Holy. She is really old and wise and tells us wonderful stories when she is awake, that is. Wake up, Holy! Wake up! It's time for you to tell us a story. I am not asleep, Tubby. I was just thinking of which story to tell all of you today. So, have you thought about it? Yes. Today, I will tell you a story about how the people of Israel get their first king. Long time ago, the people of Israel came to Samuel, a wise man of the Lord, asking him for a new king to rule them and their nation. So Samuel called the people of Israel together for a religious meeting at a place called Mizpah. Samuel said, Today, you don't want to obey the Lord. You have asked for a king. Well then, gather yourselves before the Lord by tribes and by clans. Then Samuel had each tribe come forward and the Lord chose the tribe of Benjamin. Now, the families of the tribe of Benjamin were asked to come forward and the family of Matri was picked out. From the family of Matri, the son of Kish, Saul was chosen as the king of Israel. But Saul hid himself behind a large bag and was brought out by the people. Saul was a strong man and a foot taller than anyone else. Samuel said to the people, Here is the man the Lord has chosen. The people of Israel were very happy at the anointment of the new king. Samuel explained to him the rights and duties of a king and wrote them in a book which he kept in a holy place. So this was the story of how Saul became the first king of Israel. So children, the question for today is... May I ask the question today? Please, please, please? Okay, go ahead. What was Saul's father's name? That was a good question. So, who will answer Tubby's question? I will, I will. His father's name was Kiss. No, it was Kish, silly. Well, he was close, Tubby. Now, off you go, children. Today I will tell you the story of David the king. David was Jesse the farmer's youngest son and God's chosen king of Israel after King Saul. King Saul was very fond of David in the beginning. Later, however, because of David's growing popularity, Saul became very jealous of him. The Israelites, in the meantime, had to fight another war with the Philistines in which the Israelites lost. Saul lost his three sons. Soon Saul died of sadness. After Saul had died, there was no danger for David. So he decided to come back to his own land. His own tribe of Judah made him the king, just as Samuel had said when David was a little boy. As time passed, the rest of Saul's sons also died. Hence David was made the king of entire Israel. When the Philistines heard this, they decided to attack. But David proved to be a strong and clever king. He soon defeated the Philistines and drove them away. Never again did they dare to attack the city of God. David needed a capital city. He decided to take Jerusalem. Jerusalem was a beautiful city set on top of a hill. Jerusalem was strongly guarded and was a fortress. The Jebusites living there did everything they could to stop David from entering their city. 
but soon David found underground tunnels leading to the city. So he sent his soldiers inside the city to open the gates. And so David took Jerusalem by surprise, thus making it his capital city. I hope you listened carefully. The question is, which city did David want as his capital? Oh, this one is easy peasy. David wanted Jerusalem as his capital city. Very good, Freckles. To watch more videos, please subscribe. Today's story is about David and Absalom. David was a young boy who was chosen by God to be the king of Israel. After he became king, he had many sons and he loved all of them dearly. As David grew old, his sons started fighting over who would get to be the next king of Israel. Though David knew about the fights, he did nothing to stop them. One day, Amnon, David's eldest son, was killed by Absalom, his own brother. After killing Amnon, Absalom left Jerusalem and raised a strong army to defeat his father and take away his throne. David was very angry with Absalom, but he loved him too dearly to fight back. First, he left Jerusalem so that the city would not be under attack. Then he told his soldiers, Protect the city, but do not harm Absalom. Absalom rode into the battleground on his horse. As he was riding, he passed under an old oak tree. His long hair got caught in the branches, leaving Absalom hanging helplessly as his horse ran away. Soon David's soldiers found him and they killed him. David soon heard that Absalom was killed and was really very sad. He cried, Oh, how I wish I had died instead of Absalom. Oh, my dear son is dead. Soon David's other sons also tried to take the throne but failed. David finally chose his son Solomon to take his throne. The question is, what was the name of David's son who wanted to defeat him and take away his throne? Ab Absolu abs absolutely, absolutely, Absalom. See, I was paying attention. Oh, and I am sorry, Gumbo. I did eat your sandwich. Great. Then let's begin with the story. I hope you kids are going to love it. King David was a ruler of Israel and he was a great believer in God. During his rule as the king, Israel grew ten times larger than what it was under King Saul's rule. But now, King David was old and sick. He was tired of ruling such a large kingdom. David had many sons, and one of them was Adonijah. Even though his name meant my Lord is God, Adonijah was not a good man. He claimed to the people of Israel that one day he would rule the kingdom. He even tried to steal his father's throne, knowing that King David was too weak to resist him. But that was not God's plan for Israel and its people. David's wife, Bathsheba, knew that her son Solomon should become the king of Israel. She informed David about Adonijah's plan and immediately David gathered all his leaders and declared Solomon as the new king of Israel. Soon David fell very ill. Before his death, he said to his people, Believe in Solomon. He is the one chosen by God to be your king. The people of Israel believed what David said. After his father's death, King Solomon sat on the throne and firmly established the Israel kingdom once again. During his rule, King Solomon remembered the one advice that his dead father gave to him. He had said, Always follow God's path and you shall prosper in everything that you do. 
One night, God appeared in Solomon's dream. He asked him, If I grant you one wish, what would you ask for? You may ask for anything that you want. O oh Lord, give me wisdom to be a good king. That's all I ask for. Solomon's request pleased God, and he granted his wish along with great honor and riches. One day, two mothers came to King Solomon for justice. One of them fell to his feet and cried. This woman's son died in the night, and she switched her dead baby with me. She took away my living baby. No, I did not switch the babies. The dead baby is yours, and the one that is alive is mine. It was difficult for Solomon or anyone to tell which of them was speaking the truth. However, he soon had a plan. He called out for a sword. Bring me a sword. One of his soldiers followed his orders and immediately brought him a sword. Solomon said, Now divide the baby into half. Give one half to each of them. The entire court was silent. The real mother of the living baby cried out, Oh my lord, please do not kill my baby. Give her my child. Let him be divided. He shall be neither yours nor mine. King Solomon immediately knew who the real mother was. He ordered his soldier. Give the baby to the first woman. I know she is the real mother. The people of Israel were very happy with Solomon's judgment. They understood that God's wisdom was in him. The people of Israel had no temple to worship God. When David decided to build a temple for his people, God had appeared to him and said, It is your son who will build the house in my name. So, when Solomon became the king, he started building a wonderful temple for God. It took seven long years to complete the temple. But the day had arrived when Solomon gathered all his people and dedicated the temple to the Lord. The people and the king offered their prayers and thousands of sacrifices to God in the temple. They even held a great feast, which lasted for two weeks. One day after this, God appeared to Solomon once again. He promised to bless Solomon and his people if they continued to obey God. Sadly, neither the king nor his people obeyed God all the time. While Solomon wasted his time disobeying God, one of his officers, Jeroboam, had a strange experience. One day, Jeroboam met a prophet who said, God will soon be dividing Solomon's kingdom for disobeying him, and you will rule over ten of the twelve tribes. Hearing this from the prophet, Jeroboam quickly escaped to Egypt, knowing that Solomon would kill him if he stayed. Years passed, and Solomon grew old. Finally, he died. His son Rehoboam sat on the throne after his father's death, and he taxed the people even worse than what his father did. This angered the tribes, and ten of them rebelled against him. Solomon's kingdom got divided into two, and the ten tribes chose Jeroboam as their king, just as the prophet had said. Holy, that was indeed a wonderful story. Told you, you are going to love it. Well, we love all the stories you tell us. Thank you, Gumbo. It's my pleasure. To watch more videos, please subscribe. The story I'm about to tell you today is about Solomon 
turning away from God. King Solomon, the son of David, had become very rich. But though he was rich, he always managed to spend more than he had. So he would be forced to borrow from others. Then to pay back the money he had borrowed, he would tax his people heavily. When he needed workmen, he sent his officials to bring men to work as his slaves. And he always refused to pay them. Solomon was slowly turning away from God. Solomon had many wives during his lifetime. His wives were from many different countries, so they prayed to different gods and had their own religions. Instead of teaching them about his religion, Solomon made temples for each of their gods and eventually started praying to them too. All this made God very sad. He said to Solomon, I thought you would stay faithful to me till the end, just like your father. But since you have broken the laws of the commandments, I will take everything away from you. For the sake of David, none of this will happen in your lifetime, but will happen in your son's life, and you will have only one tribe. And so, just as God had said, when Rehoboam, Solomon's son, became the next king, he faced many problems. That's so sad. I'd really like Solomon. I know. Money can sometimes change a person. So I hope you paid attention. The question is, for whose sake did God tell Solomon that nothing bad would happen in his lifetime? Oh, I know, I know, Holy. It was Rehoboam, right? No, Gumbo. It was David. You must pay more attention. Today's story is about how the nation of Israel got divided. Solomon was the king of Israel, but he disobeyed God. God warned him that he will lose the position of the king if he continued disobeying him. So Solomon left all his kingdom and wealth to his son, Rehoboam, who did not honor God either. Rehoboam was such a terrible king that it led to the division of the kingdom into two parts, the northern kingdom and the southern kingdom. Jeroboam was the son of one of Solomon's officials, and Solomon had put him in charge of some work, as he was a very capable boy. One day, a prophet came to him and tore his own robe into twelve pieces. Take ten of the pieces. He told Jeroboam, This is what God says. I will give you ten of the tribes of Israel. I will leave one tribe for Solomon's son, and one for the sake of my loyal servant, David. This angered Solomon, and he tried to kill Jeroboam. But Jeroboam escaped to Egypt. When Solomon died, his son Rehoboam became the king of Israel, and he went to Shechem, where officials had gathered to crown him the king. The people of Israel, along with Jeroboam, went to speak to Rehoboam about the heavy taxes that were imposed on them by King Solomon. They requested him to lighten the load, and they would be his loyal subjects. Give me three days to think about it. Rehoboam responded. He took the situation to some of King Solomon's advisors, who advised him to do as per the demands of the people. This would ensure the loyalty of the people of Israel towards Rehoboam. But Rehoboam ignored their advice and did what the younger men told him to do. Tell them to stop complaining or else you will pile more taxes on them and need more labor. Three days later, when the people of Israel came to hear Rehoboam's response, they were upset. He had rejected all their requests. Rehoboam sent a man of his force to restore order and subdue the people into serving him. But the people of Israel stoned the man to death. The northern tribes of Israel refused to serve Solomon's son and made Jeroboam their king. 
This is exactly what God had planned and warned Solomon years before. Solomon should have obeyed God and simply listened to him. Then the nation wouldn't be divided. Hmm. Holy, what's today's question? Well, today's question is, who was made the leader of the northern tribes of Israel? Jeroboam! Excellent, Tubby! That was today's story. I hope you liked it. We'll be back soon. Until next time. To watch more videos, please subscribe. Hidden plants and trees. On the fourth day, God created the sun to shine in the day, the moon and stars to come out at night. One day, Moses went to Mount Horeb with his sheep. There, God appeared to him as a flame of fire in a bush. Since there was no room anywhere else, they decided to spend the night in a stable. Here, Mary had her baby, Jesus. She wrapped him in a blanket and put him to sleep. He's got the Lord.